Good evening. I'm Charlie Tush. Welcome to Dead Air Live. Uh, my guest tonight is Michael Coran, who's been on here uh, numerous times, uh, is a poet, philosopher, author, uh, and multi, multi-talented person, teacher, uh, counselor, all kinds of things. Wow. Uh, so that's Michael uh, in a nutshell. And I don't really know why he's here tonight, but we're going to talk about something that he's brought with him. Riddles. Riddles. Jokes and okay. poems. Because mm -hmm. I want to find out. These are dear to me. And I want to find out what the great Tar Charlie Tesh, I really do, <laughs> thinks about it. So I'll start with some easy riddles. You told me to just have a few riddles at the beginning. Okay. And I'm going to be a good boy, try to be a good boy, and do what I'm told. Charlie told me before the set, before the show began to behave myself, which is not very easy. I'm, but, but, okay. You, you needn't really do that. That was a joke. That was it. Oh, well, thank you. Boy. So here's the Turn first. Here's my. Oh no. Here's some little trivial riddles that don't have too much meaning. Okay. Tell me if you heard them, and, and then we can. So, Timmy's mother had three children: April, May, and what's the name of the third? August. You see, you're contrary, but you're. That's a great answer, not mine. You want to try again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we could do it like nine times. No, I can. I if I say it slowly, you, you're going to get it because you're really brilliant. Okay, so it was what? April and May. No, let me start the, the, the riddle again. Timmy's mother had three children. Mm -hmm. The name of the first was April. Okay. The name of the second was May. Okay. And the name of the third was? Timmy. Yes. <laughs> oh, I see, we're having fun. Okay, here's a similar one, a little more challenging, because yep. you're someone who... Wow, well, now I'm prepared for yes, the difficulty a little bit. So one night, a king and a queen walk into an empty castle. Uh -huh. No one else comes in, and no one else comes out, except in the morning... Three adults leave. How could this be? Well, somebody was there before. No, and I said, oh, it was an, I said they walk into an empty castle. An empty castle. Yes. You're creative, but you, you got to follow the rules. Okay. So, this man and woman go enter this empty castle in the evening. And in the morning, they leave. Not in the at, evening. Oh. At one night. One night. Okay, so that's later than the evening. Yep. Okay, so one night they go in, and then the next morning three people come out. Three adults. Three adults, yes. So they didn't, like, have a child who... No, no, this is, a, this is a... No, this is, you could really get this. Think of the first one. I can give you a hint whenever you want. <laughs> this is good for, the, for Somerville. <laughs> this is great for children, uh, children of all ages. Okay, so you claim it was empty, but maybe somebody else went in. I said no. Night. I said no one else came in and no one else came out for the whole for for, for the time. Now, okay, say the very beginning. Yes, again. now you're getting smart. He's he's he can learn, folks. Okay, I'll do it slowly. One night, a king and a queen walk into an empty castle. That should be enough of a hint. Well, keep going now. Oh. In the morning, three adults walk out. No one else has come in. This is the next morning. Yeah, the next morning. Uh, well, the king or the queen was a pair of Siamese twins. It's, your answer is better than mine, but I'm going to say it one more time slowly and you're going to get it. <laughs> Remember Timmy's mouth? One night... Yeah. This doesn't seem hard or, or well, ambiguous. Well, think, think of that as your hint. One night. Yeah. Say, so keep going. No, I don't need to keep going. One night. Yeah. So uh, there were three people, the knight and the king. And the yes, queen. yes, that's great. Yeah. You, oh, you're brilliant. It's, no wonder you've been running the show for so long. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Okay, now these are some, two more that I love that are philosophical. Maybe I can even get three in. 
Um, oh, we only have 50 minutes left. Yes, but these are important. These are getting the mind to work. This is keep. This is going to promote longevity. Yeah. See, this is this is part of. You, you know, you emphasizing the first line is uh, what it reminds me of is watching mystery movies, you know, or, or dramas on TV. Right? Yes. Because it always starts out with the, you know, this setup, you know, where something is going on and people are running around and somebody dies or whatever, and then it goes to the theme music, you know, and then it introduces the main characters, you know, who are investigating or whatever. But there's always something in that first episode, in that, that first little section that you have to have really paid attention to because that's going to be very important later on. Yes, so you should be good at this. Well, I have to practice it. So, what am I? The more I take, the more I leave behind. So this is getting more deep now because you're a very philosophical person. This isn't a trick so with the, words. The more it's, you take, the more you leave behind. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What am I? You are... Uh, the more you take, the more you leave behind. When you want a hint, I can give you one. Uh... Okay, give me a hint. It's a, the hint is a little story that's true. So it's an indirect hint. I go to Stop and Shop, and I know the cashier who lives in the neighborhood. So when she asks me how I'm doing, it's a hard day for me. I say, Kathy, I'm taking one foot after another. And the bagger is one of these mentally challenged people, mm -hmm. happily bagging, and he hears me and he thinks for a while and then a light bulb goes off in his head. He said, one step after the other, that's walking. Uh -huh. He was so happy. Uh -huh. That's our hint. That's a hint. What am I? The more I take, oh. the more I leave behind. Well, you're a, you're a pedestrian walking, say, through uh, soft earth, and you're leaving footprints. Behind. Yes, I'm a, foot, I'm a foot, footstep or a footprint. Yes. <laughs> I'm a footstep. So that's deeper, right, the, in some ways, maybe yeah. deeper. Now I'm going to tell you my... Can I get, tell you two more, and then we can move on? Oh, uh, it's up to you. Okay, I, this is... So you and I go camping. Okay. And we find our spot. And since you're you and I'm me, you know how to set up the tent and give me instructions. But you, we there, set it up together. You, you give me, you give me commands. My, Michael Pound is taken. And then we go to sleep. At three in the morning, you jostle me. And you say, Mike, look up. What do you make of it? And I say... I see the stars, and they remind me that we're all part of a brilliant universe that guides and nourishes us, and we can really feel the beauty of it and still have enough room in our mind to wonder what we're going to have for breakfast. Um, and I say, and Charlie, what do you make of it? And the riddle is, what do you tell me in one sentence? Well, why did I wake you up in the first place? And tell, me, you know? to, and tell me to look up? Yeah. And why, and well, that's, you're getting closer. And what do I see? Well, you said you saw the stars. I'm concerned yes. that there's... That what happened to the tent? Exactly. Michael, you philosopher, they stole our tent. <laughs> From around us. <laughs> so, I, so I like that one for um, being practical. Okay, <laughs> here's my favorite one, which is in, for me and maybe many of us, this, the story of my life. 
When you were in first grade, which was where? Uh, Villa Park, Illinois. Yes. At the uh, Washington grade school. And who was you? you remember who your teacher was? Oh, in first grade? Yeah. That might be hard, huh? I can remember a few of them, but I don't think I remember the first Well, name, give me one. Oh, Miss Petrie. I think she was fifth grade. Okay. Well, Miss, well, uh, Miss uh, um, oh, I can almost remember the third grade. Oh, we'll, give, we'll give you Miss Petrie, but we'll put, her, we'll put her back in the first grade. Okay. And she knows you, loves and likes you, and since she's also a fifth grade teacher, she wants to inspire the class by revealing how you're really progressing way beyond your age. And hopefully all of us can, all of us in the class can do that. And she says, Charlie, I'm gonna ask you a fifth grade question. Whoa. And you say, brave as you've always been. Okay, Miss Petrie. And she says, Charlie, how do you spell crocodile? And with great confidence, like you've always had, strong voice, you say, stepping on your tiptoes, looking at her loving eyes, K-R-O-K. And she says, with love in her eyes still and in her heart, but she says, she wants to bring you up properly. She says, Charlie, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. And you stand up even higher on your tippy tiptoes, look her in the eyes and say, I'm sorry, Miss Petrie, I'm right. And the riddle is, why is young Charlie Tesh right? And he's been doing this. It's the story of his life, mine, and maybe many others. Why is he right? Uh, he's using a different language. Why so things are spelled differently. That's a great, one great answer. How about if we stick to English now? Why is he right? Uh, what was the original question? How do you spell crocodile? Yes, that, that would give you the answer you, if you think of that question. And say it very slowly. You spell crocodile with great care. That's a great answer, too, but I'll ask you the question very slowly and you'll even get it. Because you're brilliant. You've shown us all you're brilliant. How, Charlie, how do you spell crocodile? Ah, well, the question is, how do I spell it? And my way of spelling it is K-R-O-K. Right, and that's what you've been doing for, the, for good and for ill the rest, whole rest of your life. <laughs> do I spell doing it your way and being right? Aren't, aren't these lovely riddles? <clears throat> well, now we good. can... I hated first grade, though. <laughs> yes, we can go. Another show we're going to have. <laughs> oh, I, oh, my. We're, we're not going to go there, but we could. No. We, we could. Well, yes, we'll go over there a little bit. What did you hate about it? It was chaos. Oh, and the teachers couldn't control. No, it was the room was just a madhouse. Oh my! How many? And this is in a suburban Chicago neighborhood. Yeah, there were there were you know thirty kids in the class. Oh, that's like horrible. That. Maybe, maybe twenty five. And this is really somewhat um, middle class, rich. Yes. Not rich. Um, low, working class. Working class. Yeah. Oh my! Can make a grown man cry. <laughs> I, it didn't do me a lot of good, no. Things sorted out a little bit by second grade, you know. Well, here's my, f I think, one of my favorite jokes, maybe the favorite, deeply meaningful for me. So, what you might do, do you, do you mountain climb? Uh, not like a real mountaineer type. But you do go up mountains, yes? I've, I've been up, you know, big hills and stuff. Yeah. What, what was the one you loved the most? The one I loved the most? Gee. Well, I go back to like Rocky Mountain National Park. Wow. You're, Some you're, place like that, you know. I wonder why I like you. You're a real man. <laughs> you are. To me, you are. I remember hiking there one day. And uh, I was hiking, you know, from one place to another. And you had to go over this, over a ridge, you know, over, kind of over a mountain. And I was going along, and I had my boots on and everything, and I was 
thought I was making good time. And uh, all of a sudden, I hear footsteps behind me, you know, and I'm going, oh, somebody else is on the trail, you know, so I, I keep going. And, uh, and then presently, this young woman comes by, she's wearing sneakers, and she's just like pitter-patter, pitter-patter. She's going like twice as fast as I am. Uh -huh. you know? I've had that experience. So that, Running. that uh, put me in my place. Yes. Yeah. Well, in this story, you're climbing one of these mountains mm -hmm. in the rocky, what is it called, the rocky? Rocky Mountain National Park, yes. for example. Yes, and you're going up, and as often with you, I imagine, you're really impressed with the view. Oh, yeah. And you really, you really love it, and you take it in. And uncharacteristically of you, you don't pay attention to what's going on under your feet. Oh, that would be a big mistake. Yes, you, and you know that. And you start, because it had rained, and you start slipping mm. down the side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. But you're very agile and very quick very alert to what's around you, and you grab hold of a thick branch hmm. um, rooted in the side of the mountain. Yeah. And, you, and it's high, although it's way above you, and you can only hold on. And you hold on for a certain amount of time, and even you eventually, you know, you get, it starts to, you're yeah. not sure you can keep doing it. Yeah. You look around, it's a beautiful day. You see one cloud in the sky, you're an imaginative person, not particularly religious, but very imaginative and open. And you have nothing to lose, and you see the cloud and the blue sky, and you cry out, Can anyone hear me? Can anyone hear me? And you, imaginative as you are, hear a voice oh, yeah. from the other side of the mountain, and it says, can anyone hear me? I hear you, my son. <laughs> Just let go of that branch and fall into my arms. And the riddle is, what does Charlie Tesh, the mountain climber, cry at that moment? What does he do and cry? Well, I don't know. I mean, I've got my grip on that thing. I think I would pull myself up. If you could, yes, it's very it's hard. That's a good try. What's below me? Just empty space? Empty space. Oh. Uh, how far? Oh, you've walked, climbed a good amount. Yeah. So what, what could you possibly say and do? I hear you, my son. Uh, Just like oh, good, goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> you could say that. That's a great, a better answer than mine. Mine is, after you hear, just let go of that branch and fall into my arms. You think for a moment, and you look around, and you cry. Can anyone else hear me? <laughs> 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 and that's meant a lot to me who he haven't, I don't know about you, I have it, both an interior voice and interior voices. Yeah, yeah. And I finally learned I can have conversations with them mm -hmm. and say, even if they're very angry at me, which they often are very angry, um, I can say, let's talk this over. What are you hiding? Or I would like, excuse me, I'd like to listen to another voice. Mm. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what you usually do, right? You put it off. Like, oh, well, I'd well, rather listen that, to But I have else. to respect it. If I don't respect it, it comes back and haunts me. Well, yes. So that's what we were talking about just before the show started. Yes. Right? We'll share it with the audience. Well, it was, it was your, your big accomplishment today. Oh, to do that, yes, right? to learn... To make to listen to my anger, and my and my therapist says to cradle it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in the therapy that I'm in, internal family systems, they're called protectors. These angry parts of us yeah. are protecting us from what we're too vulnerable. What we're too vulnerable to to feel, mm -hmm. like something simple, like to really take in tender, loving care. Mm -hmm. which I'm learning finally to do.
And why would that invoke anger? My, um, my, anytime he gets close to me, it reminds me of um, remembrance of things past. Mm -hmm. And so I would just um, get angry rather than angry even when, the, when the, um, that need comes up. I'd be angry because it's just too much, even at this advanced stage, I'm finally at this advanced stage learning, oh my, okay, let's, maybe can I take in. My beloved first wife said, I, I'm going to try to love you the way I love my son after he moved out. Uh -huh. She gave up after we, she said, he takes it in, you, and I didn't quite understand that, but now I do, don't really take in the love that you say you want and need. Mm -hmm. so, so if you feel that you want this love, yes, then that makes, that brings out the angry person? Yes, I I'm just don't want to, that's too dangerous to feel. It's too dangerous to feel because... Uh, it reminds you, me of what happened you when expect I expect that you're not going to get it. Or it reminds me of what happened in the past, or, or it might in, enslave me if I get seduced by someone and I have right. to do what they want me to do because I'm not strong enough to even know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So finally, at this advanced stage, I, with 11 years of just this therapist, help. Yeah. it's so nice. So even in it now, I, it will be hard. I want Charlie to. Be careful. Whoops, I want Charlie to take care of me and not have me put my hand on my, over the <laughs> mic. I need his. I need your help to really, to really know that, or your friend, loving friendship. Yeah, that's. But all of the. Uh, what's the source though of that anger? I mean, it's. Of not getting. Yeah. I mean, I could tell stories. Well, and, but you have an expectation that it's not going to work. Is that right? Not consciously. Well, but nevertheless. That it would be too... I could, could get away pretending, you know, I love you. You, you know, pretend with the words, yeah. but not really breathe it in. Mm -hmm. Not really be... I'm still learning. Not really being willing to be heard if it, heard if it doesn't come. Right. You're not willing to be hurt. I am now, maybe. I don't know. I'm at least aware of it. Mm -hmm. It felt. It, today has felt very good. We'll see what tonight brings. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So that was the, can anyone else hear me? Someone else once said, well, bend the branch, and the branch will... will spring you up. Spring you up. Yeah. That's a great answer, too. <clears throat> Okay, another one. Tell me when you like a poem. <laughs> well, we're uh, 24 minutes into the show, so we're, we're approaching halfway. So you got to pace yourself, whatever you brought. Uh, okay, well, I love sharing these stories with you, especially since um, Nobi on the camera is laughing so much when he hears them. <laughs> it warms my heart. It's a great audience. Great to have a a cameraman doubling as an audience, too. Yeah. So, um, I think I'm going to stick with that. This is baseball season. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you my favorite epistemological story. All right. Epistemological is how do we know what we know, mm. which is a really great question. Or how do we know what we don't know? Is That's a even, maybe one. even better, yes. How do we know what we... Well, well, but anyway. Uh, there's a wonderful woman who has four questions for healing. Um, Byron Katie. And the first thing is, whatever you think you know, you ask, is it really true? Mm -hmm. How do you know it's true? Um, what would you be like if it, what, how do you behave when you think it's true? And what would it be like if it, for you if it wasn't true? Mm -hmm. Whatever you're holding about anybody or yourself. So this is, this is the epistemological story. Mm -hmm. It's a baseball story. And it's a convention of umpires meeting just before 
the baseball season starts, which was about a week ago. And the umpires were discussing late in the, late in the afternoon after they've been partying and getting ready for the season. Someone says, well, what's the true meaning of baseball? What's it really all about? And they talk and they talk and they have a good time and they can't come up with an answer. And finally they ask the three oldest umpires who haven't been saying anything, wise and old, we can't come up with it. What's the true meaning of baseball? And the third from the oldest gets up and says, baseball, balls and strikes. I calls them as I sees them, mm -hmm. which is a lot. I haven't even done that. I'm just starting now, just starting to say what I see rather than to be polite, be afraid to offend. Mm -hmm. Starting to just as the words come, say them if, it's, if I think it's not going to wound anyone. So that's a lot, even, and people were impressed. That's known in philosophy as relativism. I call them as I see them, you call them as you see them, which often happens in baseball games. So it's relative to your own disposition? Your own, your own perspective. Yeah. They wondered what the second from the oldest umpire could say. And he gets up and says, baseball, balls and strikes, I call them as they are. None of this namby pamby, you see, uh -huh. you. This is really, you know, some people can get in touch with what's really happening. Don't give me this relativism. In philosophy, this is called essentialism, crucial for the Catholic Church who talk, talk about the truth. We can get to it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to go through the stages, you, you, what you, how your perspective, mine, but eventually, we can get at the truth. I call them as they are. And they wondered what on earth the oldest umpire could say after that. Mm -hmm. And he slowly gets up and says, baseball, balls and strikes, they ain't nothing till I call them. <laughs> which could also be the story of our lives. That we, it's known as a, either existentialism or just co-creation. We are co-creating our lives, which is a little scary when we look at our lives. But yeah. We really have. Yes, you'd, you'd agree or not. Maybe you might not agree. We have what? Co-created our lives. Oh, well, sure. I mean, you know, it depends on how you want to look at free will and all of that stuff. Yes, and, my, and right? what do you think? Well, you know, from your own perspective, I call them as I see them. From your own perspective, you have uh, a lot of free will. Yeah. I mean, you know, we think we make the decisions that we, you know, that account for our actions. They ain't nothing until I call them. Yeah, I mean, in fact, it's it's all a, a charade, you know. I mean, it's a, it's your unconscious is is the driver, and it's making all the decisions, and then it gives you a little window, yes. you know, uh, just for your for the for for the benefit of your distraction, it gives you a little window into like what's a little, going on. Little TV set or something. Yeah, like yeah, but you don't you but don't you, get to but see you the just big picture that earlier. Way. That once we understand what's going on unconsciously, yeah. like if I understand that I really need the tender loving care I was afraid to admit mm -hmm. and breathe in and maybe give, I'd much rather talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So, but you admitted, I thought, that once we understand what's going on, we have more freedom. Um, yeah, I think that's true. I think that's true. But the, your unconscious is so vast yes. that you can't possibly ever 
appreciate all that's going on there in the in the the depths yes of activity Once. which are unconscious i mean they are unconscious and we and you think we can't well you you're younger than i am when you get to be my age oh all right no wait you just had a birthday yep weren't you 75 uh, uh three years ago oh yeah. 78 then yep but all you're right. supposed to subtract one year after 50 now. <laughs> so I'm now 22. <laughs> I'm younger than you. Well, well, that's fine. <laughs> so but, it might be time, because you've told me to keep the audience interested with different things. It might be time to do a poem. Okay, but I wanted to say, though, um, that a lot of what goes on to your brain isn't even at the level of conscious of unconsciousness. I mean, your brain is like a giant pattern recognition machine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it does recognize very obscure patterns and it causes you to take action based on those. But it doesn't get into your consciousness that, well, you know, we found, we think a connection between such and such and such and such, you know, so therefore blah 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 right no, it never comes to that level of consciousness i think we just said we, and you we can't can. for certain things for That's some things really important but, things well but for a lot of things you're not it's never going to happen it's never going to happen optimism That's so i said you might be right but i'm just happy when i get some of them well, yeah, no, I mean, I think it makes your life better to do that yes. because it, it, it affects your, your conscious being, um, right? And it can affect your circumstances. You've just inspired if, me to tell one more story. If it, if it inspires you to change your circumstances, yep. then it's going to improve your unconscious life or your conscious life. If, if, I, if I discover something in my unconscious. Yeah, if you discover something and you realize that, well... You know this this behavior that it provokes is is having a negative impact on my life in some yeah, my way. My anger, for example. For example, yeah. And so then, if you can manage that in some way, and find out what causes it, what causes and it, thank it for what? protecting me. Yeah. Yes. We well, have to appreciate it. Yes. So these things all can change. It takes a long time. Yes. But hopefully, our younger audience, who's like these riddles, can learn from us and do it. Do it by first day of summer. But if you don't actually appreciate it, then you'll never allow it to have enough presence yeah, that yes. you can actually yeah. cope oh, so with it. This is very wise. John. Doing so you're, you're in some ways doing both sides. You're saying there's these powerful unconscious patterns, yeah. but if we can find a way in, one by appreciating them, thanking them for what what they are mm -hmm. accomplishing, because they are, there's, are, there are survival mechanisms. Yeah, definitely. Then there's an opportunity to say, hey, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's another way besides me being so, um, a kind word would be passionate or <laughs> rageful, would be more closer to the truth. Yeah, know? yeah. Uh, what this is television, we won't go past that, but. So that, that there's hope for us. Well, there needs to be, you know, because that's, uh, I think, is a, a really major issue with our whole culture and all the people who live in it. I mean, you see these acts of, you know, that are coming to light every day in the newspaper, you know, of as people, you know, doing sexual assaults on somebody else or or taking their gun down to the local church and uh, heating things up there. But these are all things that come out of our lives, right? They're not just, oh, this person is just a freak or something like that. It's, 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 we've, we've evolved to this point where this is a regular activity now in our in our culture, I in our society. why, evolutionarily speaking, the value of having so much unconscious and being very unaware of it, certainly as we're growing up, mm -hmm. 
maybe, I mean, all these instincts that animals have, that keeps them going if they had a right. caterpillar had to learn how to crawl. Right. And the value evolutionary for us, maybe we're evolving in, and just from this conversation, when we're learning about the unconscious, which certainly ha has been happening since Freud and probably yeah. since um, the first play uh, by Aristophanes, where, <laughs> where the, we won't go into it now, but the, um, the sun is produced, Orestes is produced, is chased by furies mm. because he's killed his mother, because yeah. his mother killed his father. It was uh, not a very functional family. <laughs> And the Greeks the end, had a lot of dysfunctional yeah, but families. They knew, what was, they knew what was going on. Yeah. There's furies that attack us. Well, the playwrights did anyway. Yes, and then, but they, the play was very popular. Yeah. Aeschylus wrote it. At the very end of the play, the goddess Athena, in a trial, tells the furies, you now have to be nice to Orestes because mm -hmm. he was honoring his father. And the furies turn into humanities. I'm feeling that myself. And you means the prefix you like eulogy means ah, yeah. good good words. Yeah. So these furies turned into good, good spirits, spirits uh -huh. way before uh, religions that we know. Yeah. So, um, but I think, you know, what we're seeing in the culture is the same thing that you were talking about. It's a reaction to these fears for one thing. And it also exploits some of our, our basic human nature, which is the same as other animal nature. Right? So we're wired to enjoy the things that we need to do to, to maintain our existence. Right? And so that's like, you know, eating and sleeping and having sex and killing. Right? Yeah. In order to survive, people had to be killers. Yeah. Right. And, we're, and often together, it was a together activity. Yeah. Like a team. Well, they would hunt as a team. The, instead of Definitely. the Celtics, it would be the Boston Killers. <laughs> mm. Well, yes. The Boston. No, but. To be kind, this is Somerville, the Boston Hunters. But people are so intent on, you know, on, on achieving goodness, for example. I mean, you know, there's all the, you know, there's all the deadly sins and things that you're not supposed to do. There are all these things that you're not supposed to do, but those are, and what's the first, what's the first commandment? Thou shalt, I, thou shalt, well, the first commandment is, um, I am the Lord your God, and then I think the second one is, thou shalt keep the Sabbath. I oh, thought, this is a Jewish one. Yeah. But the regular Ten Commandments, what's the first you think one? think thou shalt not kill? Yes, yes. Why is that the first commandment? Because it's the most important thing. You know, because what, you know what Moses did when he came down with that commandment? He hit somebody over the head with it, and uh, that was the end of that person. He killed him. And guess what <laughs> no. he did to the people who were worshiping the golden calf? Oh, they all got wiped out. Yeah, I guess, and guess how? Do you remember how? Uh, he, he poured boiling oil on them or Close. something like that. Melted the calf yes. and poured the melted gold down their throats. Ah, yeah. No, that's in the Hebrew Bible. I'm well, sorry. Well, you know, no, I mean, it's a it's another story. Yes, it's just another story. But nobody's perfect, even Moses and the Lord. But Speaking but of, the, oh. but the thing is, you know, our society is is built on, totally on denial. It is not built on making friends with the part of you that is the killer, right? Yes. Because if you don't ever do that and you just try to ignore it then or all that rage down. is going to be yes. focused there, and it's going to come out when you yes. don't want it to come out. Yes, and eventually right? when you get to be 78, you might be able to make friends with it. Yeah, but in the meantime, we have all this mayhem going on where if, if society as a whole would go, well, yes, we realize that we are killers, yeah. you know, and we need to manage that just like we are rapists. Yes. You know, all these things are just go back to our most fundamental needs, and they're and they're... They're hardwired into our yeah. into our systems. So, so, and we, you know? and so you have to come up with some compensatory mechanism yes. you know, that lets you deal with that yes. in a way that it doesn't leak out into all the other aspects yes. of your life. Well said. Too bad I didn't know you when I was twenty. 
<laughs> to hear this, which reminds me of another story, yeah. if I may. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So you and I, when we were young, visited the uh, local church. And we saw the holy water. And you said, hey, Mikey, we can put paper boats in there and see which, which, which boat gets to the other end of the holy water. Mm -hmm. So we're having a good time because you're a good time, Charlie. And unfortunately... Everybody else is in the, in yeah, yeah, having yes, the, the yes, sermon. We're, we're having fun. We're honoring the Lord in our own way. Yes. And the, and the assistant priest catches us mm. and brings us downstairs. He knows us and the family. So you're good and you say, uh, Mikey, you run for that door. Yeah, yeah. And and you he, escape, and I don't. Because you, you run in front of the yep. for the priest. You're really uh, you're giving up your life to save me. <laughs> well, and then the priest knows you well enough mm -hmm. to know the only hope is to put the fear of God in you. Right. And so he says to you, Charlie, where's God? And then as now you're a very straight talking, honest person, and you said, I don't know, Father. And he goes even closer and says, Charlie, where's God? And you're an honest person, you stick to, you said, I told you, Father, I don't know. And then he gets nose to nose with you, <laughs> so close, and says, Charlie, where's God? And you're smart enough to run. <laughs> <clears throat> and you run for the same door I escaped at. Uh -huh. Run back home, come to me, I live next door with to you, and you say, Mikey, we're in trouble. God's lost. God is missing. <laughs> yeah. And they're blaming it on us. <laughs> And we can identify with God be missing, yes? Uh, well, to a certain extent, yes. Tell me more. Well, m my own belief is that God is everywhere and within all of us. So mine too. never far away. Yes, mine too now. You know. I think God is, not only in, is everyone and everything. But for most people, God is nowhere and is irrelevant. I even think God is, the emptiness inside is God too, like the black hole that the universe came out of. Well, God is everything. Yes, and more. So it has to be. And more, whatever, the, whatever this universe came from. Yeah. It's mother but, and father. But look at all the people who claim that they believe in God and then they spend, you know, uh, six days and 23 hours doing really atrocious things. Well, nobody's, other people. nobody's perfect. <laughs> you start somewhere. Well, if no, it, I mean, uh, you know, look at the religious right, so-called, in this country. Yes, who voted for our know? dear, beloved president. And, and look at their attitude towards, towards other people, especially people of other races. So... You know, the people from Central America, the people from Haiti, you know, from wherever, those people are subhuman to them still. And they haven't really realized and, and, they, and that it, that's nothing like what Jesus represented. No. Or the, right? even the beginning. They call themselves Christians. In the image of God. They have nothing to do with Christ. Right. Well, that, that's just, but I hope they'll eventually get it. They might be slow. I hope. Well, you can hope, but, you know. And pray. They're going in the wrong direction. Yes, but nobody's perfect again, so they need a good GPS. Maybe we could have a, a God GPS that lets you know when you're going in the wrong direction. Wouldn't uh -huh. that be great? Uh, like Siri, or like Like Siri. your own priest would follow you yeah, like Siri. all day. Siri would be on the top, Siri, because they, the iPhones have yeah, no yeah. direction. Yeah. Charlie. <clears throat> you're going in the right direction, just want to let you know. Wouldn't that be great? And you get that encouragement. It would be a horrible nuisance. Oh, but you'd say, Charlie, how many times do you want me to tell you this? Well, once a week would do. Thank yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> I might need it like hourly. Good choice for supper. Good to get the, 
the salad with the melted cheese. All right, how about a, how about a poem? Okay. Otherwise, we'll, we'll never get to them. Okay. You have a... Um, I'm going to give you the shorter one. Is this like uh, from your uh, a poem a day? No, no, I could give you one of those, but this is not... This is... Something more, more focused? This is the... <laughs> The Guest House by Rumi. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, this is a very famous poem. It means a lot to me. But we'll just, I'll just read it now once, yes? Sure. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a meanness, a depression, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Hmm. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of all its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. She may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide to move our bodies and souls. to be whole. Mm -hmm. well, it's just what we've been talking yes, about, isn't that's it? What, yes, I, how's, how's that for serendipity? <laughs> uh-huh. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, gee, it made me think of a lot of things from what you were saying earlier. Being human is a guest house. So it's like, yeah, that's life. You were we're, in, that, you we're were in this space. You were saying that too, yes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, take advantage of it. Every morning is a new arrival. Yeah. It's an, and you don't know what to expect. Um, yeah. Crowd of sorrows, it's going to sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still treat each, each guest honorably. <laughs> Thank you for totally wiping me out. <laughs> well... She may be clearing you out for some new delight. Which is true. Which is what you found, right? Yep, which is true. Yeah. Um, yeah, invite them. Meet them at the door laughing. Oh, that's so hard. Them, that's a good one. That is hard. Um, ha, oh. ha, I want to kill myself. Ho, ho. I want to... But that's the... You need to have that kind of an attitude a bit so you don't take it so seriously. That way you're not... You, the fear doesn't strike you as being so scary. Yes, I'm slowly, right? slowly. I mean, if you look at them as somewhat of an imposter, yeah. then they lose some of their validity. And you give them and power. You, yeah. Well, but you give them a chance to teach you what they need to teach oh, you. Oh, if you, if you greet them. Yeah. Yeah. If you greet them, though, with, with an attitude, you're laughing at them. Or laughing with them, maybe, or, even. Yes. Well, if it come, if if it's anger that's coming, it's not really laughing much, but you can laugh at it, oh. and you can take it. Hi, anger. You can take it with a kind of grain of salt or whatever. Maybe, but I, but I can't trivialize them. But they don't like. Them. No, no, you don't want to trivialize them. No, but but it's but it is good to realize that they're not necessarily devastating. They don't have that much power over you. You don't have to treat them as sovereigns. In a, in yeah, they're a, like the a, Wizard of Oz. They puff themselves up. And exactly. Yeah. Hey, um, so what, what's the history of this guy, Rumi? When did he write this? He wrote it, I believe, in the 1100s. He's, he was from, 
from Turkey. Mm -hmm. He was um, a, a Sufi, mm -hmm. which means he was a Muslim mystic. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, he, he met, had a, met a teacher finally na named um, Shamas Tabriz. Mm -hmm. And he was teaching theology, Rumi, and then Tabriz said, hey, I want to teach you what to experience what you're talking about. Uh -huh. And Rumi was transformed. And they loved each other. So Rumi was a, uh, somewhat academic? Yes, somewhat academic. Okay. And then, so he wasn't, he, he could talk about the stuff that he was interested in, but he hadn't really experienced it. Like he, maybe you and I are experiencing something of this when we're talking about it, I hope. Yeah. But then he achieves some kind of enlightenment. Oh, right huge. Or at least, I mean, to write a poem like this, mm -hmm. this is just one of many. Right, but it's still where we are today, you and I. Yes. Right. And I had read this many, many, many times. It takes me a long time to really take it in. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe I've, I've, I'm getting closer. Or maybe I, I should say I think I've, I'm taking it in now. Mm -hmm. Maybe this morning, <laughs> finally. Oh, well, no, I mean, each one of those people, I don't know, I think, I think people think of enlightenment as like, this uh, enormous event, you know, you're going to be walking down the street and all of a sudden, you know, the heavens are going to open up. Like that. And that, suddenly you're going to know everything. Like or, the beggar who said, hey, that's walking. Yeah. <laughs> Light and moment. Yes. Yeah. But, but that isn't how it works. Mm -hmm. It happens like moment by moment. Yes. And right. you, get, you get some like insight into something and it's like, and it comes oh, again, yes. I, I see. That makes sense. That's enlightenment. Yeah. And if you can just keep doing that, yeah. eventually it accumulates. Hope for us. Hope for us. Yes. <laughs> now, I would love, if you don't mind, um, to, I'd love to hear you read this too. Cause, cause we, you want me to read it? Now? Yeah, I'd love you to read it. Well, you practiced it, obviously, yeah. all those times. Yeah. Um, I can't do it that with that gravity. You can um, do it with levity if you like. <laughs> I don't know if that fits. Uh, this being human is a guest house. It's like being on vacation. Wow. Eh? It's like being on vacation. Every morning a new arrival. Yeah, you're on vacation. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, I mean, you go to some new place and you're going to have have to eat what the local people eat for breakfast, and that's going to be something different because you're just used to your Wheaties. And whatever. Anyway, um, okay. Uh, a joy, a depression, meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. So, yeah, it surprises you. Usually, you miss those things. You know, somebody will say something and you, and you know, it'll make you feel creepy, but you didn't really dwell on that, you know, for example. But, but if you were to take the time, you would have more of these experiences. So you'd have this momentary awareness, um, which you don't get if you don't have that feeling of, well, here I am in the guest house and it's a new day kind of thing. Um, I'm just keeping track. We got about, I think, about a minute and a half, so I'm going to have to zip through this unless there's something else that you would prefer. No, I'd love to, to hear you wrap it up. Welcome and entertain them all. Okay, even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Well, we did talk about that. Still, treat each guest honorably. She may be clearing you out for some new delight. So it's interesting. And is that his choice of words, or has this been like edited and revised? I, I translated a little bit myself. So, so you changed the word to a she? Yes. Okay. All right. I mean, that's so. Uh, okay, we got two minutes. So, um, that's a good addition, I think, to it because you know it keeps you a little bit off balance. Yeah, you know, where you should be to read something like this, you should be off balance. Um, the dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. So we, we talked about that. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide. 
to move our bodies and souls to be whole. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the most important part, right? Um, be grateful that you, that you can experience those things because that's the only way you can make progress wow. and keep moving forward. So, I don't know, I guess, how, much, how are we doing? We have like one minute, or are we wrapping it up? Two minutes, okay. Anything else? Um, well, what does it mean to, for you to, the last line, a, a guide to move our bodies and souls to be whole? Maybe we've said that, yes? To be whole is some very special. Well, you're, because you're fra as long as you're, you're keeping these things at odds, then, then you, can't, distance, you can't have a, then jazz, can't ever get a happy together. jazz. You're never going to have peace. You're never going to have peace until you can bring those things back together. I have little oh, no. islands of peace, but around them, I didn't know where these, <laughs> these sharks were swimming. And yeah, they yeah. were making, making friends with the sharks. Yeah. So, well, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, I'm not, I don't think I want to introduce anything anymore. Yeah. Uh, do we have any last feelings, thoughts, questions, answers? Uh, well, how many more riddles do you have? I'm just curious. Oh, um, I have. Okay, maybe we can end with a riddle. Um, oh, I guess we're going to say goodbye. Oh. All right. We are All right. Thank you for joining us for <laughs> riddles, <laughs> jokes, and poems. Charlie Tesh, Michael Coran. Thank guess, you, Scott. I guess we're done. Thanks, Thanks for coming, Sarah Michael. Thanks, Sarah Brett. Thank, yes. We can just say thank you forever until, until we're done.